ready? Yep. Can we go? Hello everybody, I am back here on Broadcast Alley, ITSP Magazine. We booked uh, a few guests in these days, we've been very busy and uh, today I ran into the man that wasn't supposed to be here. That is and true. As a matter of fact, I said to <laughs> that you, is true. you are not here. But you are, and I'm yes. glad you're here. And I'm very grateful Steve to be here. Steve Lusinski from the Aerospace Village, as you can see from uh, the clear advertisement. That's right. That's right. So uh, I love to talk to you guys. I love to talk to you in particular. And uh, what do you want to talk about today? Yeah, well, I am very grateful to be out here, and I'm glad you guys came by to visit CNS once again. The fact that we Rob have you. the Aerospace Village here at RSA as the Aerospace Sandbox. Um, but being able to team up with you all and uh, catch you up on what we've been doing and what we were thinking about in the future. Yeah, and we had a nice conversation pre-event with yeah. Henry and Liz. Oh, yeah. So they kind of like, you know, the energy was great, you know? Oh, yeah. If There's you guys don't know Henry, you need to meet Henry. That's right? a good podcast to watch. <laughs> it's yeah. a good podcast to watch. Uh, but I have spoke with you many, many times. Yeah, yeah. So we go way back. And this is what I want to do, like a little bit about who you are to yep, start. Yep. And I want to take five minutes of the history of the Aerospace Village. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. So let's go with that. So I'll start with the village, because uh, I'm just one part of it. Uh, basically, if you've been to other conferences, right, just like RSA, you have your main track talks, and you have these little specialty areas. DEF CON, biggest hacker conference, uh, is exactly that way. And we were born out of that as the Aviation Village in 2019. And now we're the aerospace village, both aviation and space cybersecurity. And the idea is, the way we say our mission is building relationships, government, uh, private sector, academia, students, all those interested parties, inspiring the next generation of leaders so they get into cybersecurity, because we need it. We really want them to get in the aviation and space side and just promoting all the great work that's going on out there. We know folks and they bring us stuff, we connect with them, and we get to show off what they're doing. And so the beauty of it is it's totally a volunteer effort. So when I say, you know, like where do I fit in? I am one of the folks, I had a military pilot background, got into cybersecurity, so I get to bring both of those fun things that I like to do into this effort as a volunteer. Uh, we have other commercial pilots, private pilots, we have uh, deep security researchers that come in and again, private sector government, and they bring all of their technical expertise, their policy expertise, and we get to participate in events like this. We get to grow opportunities and projects to, again, we want to get people interested, we want to get them engaged, and uh, I'm just, I'm so happy to be a part of it. I'm very proud of the work we do, and. Again, being able to sit here and talk through it all is, is just awesome. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and it is awesome because I got to meet with uh, with you guys the first time and many other villages at DEF CON yeah, yeah. a few years ago. Exactly. And that's where I really got in love with just talking to you guys because you're not selling anything. You're not selling a product. You're selling what you believe in. Yeah. We're all selling something, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but when you're passionate about something, and God, just by walking today, I see you guys, and again, the energy, just yeah. incredible. And I've got that from the AppSec Village and yeah. the, you know, the IoT, uh, and all the other villages that are there. So why is the Aerospace Village important? Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, there are yeah, three hours. Go. There, exactly. There, there's so many cyber concer cyber security concerns, right? Healthcare side, industrial control systems, things that have direct impacts on our lives every day. Aviation and space, sometimes they have that direct impact. And you know, when you're flying on an airplane, it is very direct that you want it to be secure in the cyber sense. <clears throat> The things we use in our daily lives, the GPS systems that are part of financial transactions, synchronizing everything so we can get our money, so we can do farming, we have safety systems and communications. It's those types of things that people don't always know about it. And so maybe it doesn't have that daily in your face and it may at times not be quite as important, but it still has an area where we need to focus 
it's easy in the sense that people really like airplanes and spaceships and satellites and things like that. So it's great to kind of bring that crowd and show them another area that they can focus on and go, oh, I can do cyber in that area in something that I like in addition to that. So it just, it adds to that and I think that's the energy where uh, I will always sell, bring me volunteers and they come in and they bring that energy because they're motivated to do that because there's a mission and it's very interesting in all those aspects. Yeah, yeah, and then you connect of course with people in the government, exactly. ISAC and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it, the, the energy, I want to talk about that because I got to talk with Sean on a podcast uh, right. with uh, Tim Fowler, yeah. and he's super passionate, oh, yeah. super technical. And then, uh, because I was on the show, we started talking about what do we bring from space yeah. to our society. And, yeah. and he's like, don't make me go there. I'm like, no, I'll make <laughs> you go there. You'll come back to a show with me. <laughs> How long is your podcast? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and we talked about all of that. Like yeah. if the GPS goes off, what we're, I mean, we use it every day. It's on our phone yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Where are we now with cybersecurity and, you know, legal and government? And I mean, it, it, do you feel like a lot of steps have been done where you, you yeah. brought it together? Um, yeah, I think, I think that's always been the case to some extent. What I've enjoyed is my previous background, working in government, being in the military, seeing what was happening behind the scenes, sometimes classified, sometimes not. But there was a lot of activity there, but it wasn't always talked about. Right. And then um, as you start yeah. looking at these other sectors, private sector, same thing, the activities are there, but everybody's kind of hidden and didn't want to talk about it, and I'd say that's how cybersecurity's been. So over time, especially in the village, being able to say, oh, that person's doing this, that person's doing this, we should be talking about it. And that's one of the things that we are very driven by is giving people a platform, finding them and bringing them in saying, please, tell people what you're doing, let's talk about it because you're doing good work and instead of hiding it, hoping nobody will discover it, let's get others involved, let's don't, get other don't ideas. Don't put it under the rug, right? <laughs> and so the beauty is, again, when I say, I think it's always been happening, but now where we can help people show that off, show their skills, and again, inspire those others to come in and join, that's been the awesome part of just having this group and getting others interested to bring that work out for everybody to learn from. And I hear a conversation in general about sharing intel. Sharing intelligence, you know, it's not just, yeah, you can think from a commercial perspective as a company if you yeah. know what other people don't know. Yeah. But, you know, let's do it for society, yeah. for, for ourselves, and yeah. that's what you guys do. You get Absolutely. together. You, you have no flags, you have no colors, you just come yeah. together. Yeah. That, that's the beauty. And Jeff. even industry has moved from the, instead of squirreling away the intel, let's all collect it together, which only helps our effort and other efforts be better. Yeah. So tell me what has been going on at the village here at RSA conference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so anybody who saw the podcast, Henry has been leading the team. <laughs> Uh, we have a flight simulator. Our friends at Pentest Partners, they support us. They build a flight simulator and they use that to show a vulnerability that causes a problem in what the pilots use for their takeoff speed. Take off too slow, they could crash. Take off too fast, they can damage the aircraft. So it's, it's showing that connection between a cyber vulnerability and the physical outcomes. Uh, Henry himself, he's part of Cal Poly and uh, he has brought in a CubeSat and the demonstration of how that system works, how you can see the time that the, tra the signal travels and, and orbitology and just getting people who've never been around that, it's, it is magic, no doubt about that. <laughs> but when you have somebody like him explain what's going on, you're yeah. like, oh, that's not so bad. Can't say I understand it, but I at least appreciate what you're doing to educate folks. Yeah, you, and, you, and get, get you get the one-on-one, -on -one, right? Yeah, and it's the one-on-one, -on -one, the engagement and interactions. Uh, our friends at CISA, Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, they are demonstrating supply chain and vulnerabilities, and they're using the context of an aviation supply chain. So things that we can bring that 
get people to come in, and again, it's educating this audience, giving them a little bit more of a technical background where they don't always have that sometimes. And uh, again, the sandbox is such a great area with all the other uh, villages and sandboxes and what they bring, and then the talks that we get to put on also. Yeah, um, Henry and Lise yeah. worked on, were on the show, and exactly. they told me about the talk that they were going to have, which I think has happened by now. Yeah, yeah. With, with, it was uh, this Casey, morning, right? and uh, I can't remember if it'll be recorded, if it'll be available for folks to watch, but yeah, so you have a former lawyer at the uh, Atlanta airport who Liz Wharton lived through the ransomware attack, so she knows all that behind the scenes. Uh, Casey Ellis, who's one of the founder, I think maybe the founder of the Bug founder, Crowd, yeah. a bug bounty company. And then Richard Simborski from Air Canada. So the discussion was what Air Canada did to bring in a vulnerability disclosure program and a bug bounty program. And that's not easy for any company. It's certainly not easy for an airline that has direct customer, why would I want to let hackers in and, and have this situation? But the, the story and hearing of, well, we were told we were very secure, no problems, we paid a lot of money, and these folks came in and found some major problems in our financial system, in our ticketing system. It was such a great example of the crowdsourcing and the talent that's out there and bringing them together. And then the three of them, the discussion was just awesome. I've, uh, I've heard I, the story, I, I but I was so I, glad to hear it again. I wish I could, uh, I could be part of that. Um, yeah, so I want to highlight again this idea of what happened in the family stays in the family. I'm bringing the Italian in me right now, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But what happened in the company stays in the company. But with that comes so much risk that you take on yourself because eventually yeah. something is going to happen. Yeah. So this idea that now company are using from even a branding perspective, the fact that they're like, look, it's more transparent and we are trying to prevent problems not happening. This yeah. is what pen testing is, red team, and yeah. all of that. So exactly. uh, it's not something you should be ashamed of. You actually, I as a, somebody that's going to fly Air Canada, yeah. I'm going to appreciate that. Exactly. Because actually, better to know. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and like even in that example of a vulnerability disclosure program, a bug bounty program, it's not willy-nilly come in and hack everything. It's certainly not come hack an airplane. That is not what's going on. No. Nobody's doing nobody's doing that openly. There's plenty of testing behind the scenes because that was what needs to happen. It's done in a very smart way. And like you're saying, we're all going to have some kind of breach. The company, big or small, no matter how much money, something's going to happen. So why not take the extra help, especially in a you know, maybe not necessarily Air Canada, but we see all these other smaller companies. We see in the supply chain, folks who can't afford these sophisticated programs. How do you bring in that talent? How do you talk about it? How do you learn from others' experience? And that's, again, things that we see is you bring the, you get that conversation out in the open and you get people talking. And as a big fan of the history of NASA, yeah. we know that a lot of things, again, that we use nowadays yeah. in our everyday Come life has been program. tested from yeah. the space program. Yeah. Maybe we didn't have, uh, we don't have the billions that they had, but at least we got the results of that, yeah. part exactly. of it, right, exactly. that, that we carry with us. So I want to go another couple of minutes yeah. um, and talk about your vision for the future. Like if you could, uh, you know, just Three wishes yeah, yeah. for for the team. I mean, I know you have a strong team, but is it ever we always strong want more. enough? That's exactly. Uh, so let's go with three wishes. What yeah, do you yeah, want? Yeah, gosh, three wishes. That's there you uh, go. so I'll go crazy town. The simple <laughs> one I'll say is we always want help. Yeah. Um, we we are not limited. There's plenty of things to do. There's big jobs. There's small jobs, and I do all of them on any given day, just like any of our volunteers. Um, there's things that we need talent. You want to come in and help us run our website. You want to help us do video editing after a conference. Um, things that we want to grow. We have projects that we uh, build out for STEM programs. So can, can we use this Lego airplane and a simple representation of a flight control system 
Can we build that out? Can we make more of them so we can scale it and send it to conferences, send a, a volunteer to a school to teach this to kids, and you give them an idea kids? of, we want to grow into that. We do in the sense like, when we're at a conference and there are kids present, parents will bring them up, of course. They're so much fun, and uh, matter of fact, one of the guys who designed our Lego kit example demo, I was just at a conference with him in Baltimore, and his son is explaining it to people as they come up, and I'm like, dude, I don't know it like what you're talking about. So like, okay, it's That's worked with cool. him now. Granted, he's very close to his dad doing this awesome work, well, Yeah, but... but it's things like that where we want to find a way from the simple new person all the way the most complex hacker, we want to have something to deliver to all of them. So if you have ideas like that, you want to bring those in, please come talk to us. You want to donate your time, your skills, absolutely, please come talk to us. The, uh, you know, I'll never turn down any donations as a nonprofit. If somebody Second wants wish. to, bring it on <laughs> in. I'm happy to talk about that. And, and again, that supports us being able to travel to events like this, getting our volunteers out and about. Um, this year already, we've covered a, an event at Embry-Riddle Prescott talking about aviation cybersecurity, B-Sides Charm in Baltimore. Um, we're going to have one of our volunteers go out to uh, InfoSec Europe, so the RSA over in London coming up in a month. I'll be there. So it's things like that, that we get to get out and talk and engage and build these partnerships. And the final one, when I say I'll go crazy town, <laughs> you think you have some piece of aviation or space equipment you want to bring something in and you want to find talented people who can connect you and get the smart folks that want to help you secure that, we can help with that. If you want to bring it in just to demonstrate and show what goes on, but you don't want people hacking on it, we can help with that. All of those things, when, when SpaceX brought a rocket motor to DEF CON last year, that's just awesome. We're not hacking on that thing. That's just cool to go, there's a rocket motor right here in our village. Uh, you know. If we could roll in an airplane someday or, or a helicopter, I mean, that's my wish list of cool things that people see. Yep. If they can get their hands on it and help out, that's even better. Any of those things are a benefit because it just gets people talking and it gets them meeting each other. And again, those engagements, so many things grow out of that. So there's my uh, there's my three wishes. It is, it's not that crazy. It's a small, it's small list. It's not, not, it's not that crazy. I think they're all feasible. I think that people are listening right now. Somebody yeah. may have a connection that uh, hopefully will make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. But I have absolutely. to say that the idea of the engine, right, in, at, at the village. I mean, you you float, you know, expensive piece of <laughs> of airplanes. A little bit of time, yeah. And when I happen to see, I don't know, the Endeavor out the in in uh, in LA, mm -hmm. the space shuttle, and you just yeah. saw it. Yeah, for it's real. Awesome. It's so it awesome. just changed your life. It is. You're like, I'm oh my god, this thing is being in space, that. right? Exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm right back to all the space shuttle stuff I grew up around. Yeah. I love going to air and space. It's all of those things. And that, again, it gets people motivated. Yeah. yeah. Well, I feel like I am an honorary member. I just oh, made myself are. of the no Aerospace doubt. Village. There is no doubt about I, that. I am you passionate about helping you out to spread the word yeah, out there. You. I know Sean, same thing. It's yeah, just, absolutely. you know, we're more comfortable talking in two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I know it's jealous not to be here for this conversation. And um, I want to thank you for all you guys do. Yeah. Thank you for finding the time. Thank yeah, you for absolutely. being here even when you're not here. Yes, I know. So he's I'm not very here. grateful. I am very grateful. My company was very gracious. So very, and, very uh, cool. again, I appreciate it. And it's this is on behalf of all of our volunteers, just getting to represent them and all the hard work they do. Absolutely. All right. Well, that's it. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Really appreciate and it. And support the, the Aerospace Village. Thank you. Awesome.